I'm Tim Bradner. Thank you for joining us with Capital Views. We're here with Senator Berta Gardner of Anchorage. She is the Senate Minority Leader and is deeply enmeshed in the, in the in very deep and important discussions of this session dealing with the budget and the, and the fiscal problem and the economy that we're dealing with. Uh, Senator Gardner, we, um, you, you know, we know what, so we've heard all session quite a lot about what the different options are. We've heard from economists about the economy, but where do we, um, we know we have the tools, but what, what do we do? Where do we go from here? Well, you said that I'm deeply enmeshed in the issue. It's my hope that every legislator is deeply enmeshed in this issue, working on it and looking for a way out of the gridlock that we kind of see. So um, we all know the, the tools that are available, the levers we can use, and we all have our favorites and our, you know, see the benefits and advantages. For example, we could have an income tax. The broad-based taxes are the income taxes and the state sales tax. Um, many of the, my colleagues in the Senate, I believe, favor a sales tax over an income tax. I do not. I think it's unequitable because it, it's a higher impact geographically in some areas of the states than others where they're already paying higher prices for stuff and they would then pay a higher increase. It's also um, hits lower people, lower income people more because they basically spend all of their money. So they're paying an income tax on everything they earn uh, or a sales tax rather. It is my hope that people will not be stuck in their position. So I don't like the sales tax. It hurts municipalities and all. But I have to consider that maybe it's part of the price of making something happen. And in exchange, maybe we'll get disclosures and fixes of oil tax credits, for example, that I think are costing the state more than we're getting out of them. Or um, I don't want to see changes or loss to, of dividend funds, but maybe we have to reconsider some of that. And what I want is for people to be willing to compromise and to avoid taking positions that they can't back away from. One of the, one of the um, problems with the sales tax I've heard is that it gets complicated because many municipalities have sales taxes. So how do we sort that out? Do we, do we have a state sales tax that would bring in, for example, a, a three or four percent state sales tax? Is that pancaked on top of, of a municipal tax? Or do you exempt it from a municipal, you exempt the municipal well, portion? Well, when we're talking about putting something in place, we could do it how we want it. But it definitely will hurt municipalities, no matter what we do, because either we're not collecting from them because they are, or they have to share what they're already using for other services. And this is at a time when municipalities have lost revenue sharing that they used to use to mm -hmm. pay for a lot of the services that people want in their communities. So um, if a, a state sales tax seems to gain in the ascendancy, we're going to find the municipalities coming out and the, you know, the municipal league pushing back really hard on that, I think. Well, and when you think of that, think of the, um, think of a, a, what is Kenai's, you know, sales tax or Juno's sales tax. Think of a state sales tax on top of that. Yes. What, what effect could that have on retail sales of large items, for example? It would have um, an effect on retail sales, but it also would have an effect on merchants who have to record, document, and present their records and their share on a regular basis. I mean, imagine doing a, like your federal income taxes every month. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, what a headache for everybody who sells stuff. Yeah. Well, and according to what, so what that tells you also is that um, one of the big issues with the sales tax is what exemptions there are. And if you accept groceries, for example, I mean, that takes a lot of the money, the revenue potential out of a sales tax. That's right. Um, Yes. And it, it may wind up that, that a sales tax is something that just doesn't generate as much revenue as people think it, it might. And it's more expensive to administer and track and record. Yeah. So um, that, I think that's probably likely to be the case. But, but if it's not, then we'll, I mean, we have to consider everything. I'm not prepared at this point to say absolutely never. Yeah, one of the um, questions too, though, is that there are big parts of the economy in this in the, where there are no sales taxes. Anchorage and Fairbanks don't That's have sales taxes. That's true too. There are also so, big parts of the economy that has no income, cash <laughs> income. So whatever you yeah. do, that's what, partly why we need a little bit of everything. Yeah. Because then it, then it, everybody's got a little bit of skin in the game. Yeah. Well, the permanent use of the permanent fund earnings is, is going to have to be, it would seem, part of the 
part of the picture. It's the one place where there's um, big stuff. That that's could, why we, we say, get, yeah. We could get, what, what sort of potential income have you heard from the permanent fund sharing of the, of the uh, permanent fund income? Oh, it's all across the board. I mean, there are some who would just use it and quit the, not quit the dividend, but have a very small amount just because it's politically unpopular. But, but we saw people backing away from positions they took a year ago, and that is encouraging. It's also encouraging that we have um, a bipartisan coalition in the House that is working together from a variety of perspectives, but focusing on getting a fiscal plan. And uh, I, I hope that that's contagious that everybody does that. We're getting together and everybody compromising. Yes. That's, that's a new idea here. <laughs> a caucus of the whole. We considered that. We proposed it at one time. Yeah. A caucus of the whole and having a Ways and Means Committee that does nothing but looking at these issues. And that, that didn't fly. So well, let's try it this way. And I, I really appreciate the governor saying, if you don't like my plan, put another plan on the table. Let's talk about it. So that's the responsibility of leadership. And we're doing everything we can to provide the, um, the courage and information to kind of make that happen. Do you, th are you, are you, do you have communication with the majority? Of course. They talk, they're talking to you? And, yes. And, uh, and, and we talk with each other, you know, in, in large conversations and in, in brief hallway chatter. And yeah, absolutely, that is ongoing and there can't be too much of it. Yeah, that's, that's encouraging. Yes. Well, thank you, Senator Gardner, for joining us. And this is Tim Bradner, Capital Views. Thank you for joining us with Capital Views. Thank, thank you. you.